So Joni Ive and Sam Altman are cooking up something wild. Yeah, the legendary Apple designer and the OpenAI CEO are teaming up to build what they're calling a family of AI-powered devices. And the way they're talking about it, it's not just another gadget. It's something meant to change how we actually feel about technology. At OpenAI's developer conference in San Francisco, they gave the first real peek, while more of a philosophical one, into what they've been building. No flashy demo, no specs, not even a teaser photo. Just Ivan Altman sitting on stage talking about why our relationship with tech kind of sucks right now and how they want to fix it. I've actually said, I don't think we have an easy relationship with our technology at the moment. And then doubled down later, calling that an obscene understatement. The guy who designed the iPhone now says we need to undo some of the damage those same kinds of devices have done. Their partnership officially started last year when OpenAI bought Ive's design studio, Lovefrom's hardware startup IO, for a massive $6.5 billion. Before that, Lovefrom had already been experimenting with ideas around new interfaces, but the launch of ChatGPT apparently made everything click for Ive. He said it gave his team clarity about their purpose for the last six years, that the kind of interface they'd been dreaming of was finally possible. Now, OpenAI and Tuth, Ive aren't just working on one product. They've got a whole family of devices in development. I've admitted they've come up with 15 to 20 really compelling product ideas, which honestly sounds like both a dream and a nightmare. The momentum is so extraordinary, he said, and the challenge is trying to focus. That chaos kind of tracks, because reports say the project's been running into serious technical hurdles. The big one? Compute power. Even OpenAI itself is struggling to keep enough GPUs running for ChatGPT, so fitting that kind of intelligence into a portable device is a serious challenge. Privacy is another sticking point. Instead of something that waits for a wake word like, hey Siri, this device is supposedly always on, always listening and watching, cameras, mics, the whole deal. That's raising a ton of questions about how to keep it from being creepy. One source said they're still figuring out how to make it accessible but not intrusive, and even joke that the goal is to have a friend who's a computer, not your weird AI girlfriend. Then there's the device's personality. Sounds strange, but that's apparently one of the hardest problems. They want it to feel friendly and useful, but not talk too much or hang around in conversations after it should have stopped. You know, like ChatGPT sometimes does when you've already said thanks and it keeps going. As for what the thing looks like, nobody really knows, except that it's definitely not a phone, not glasses, and not a smartwatch. Altman literally said it's something new. I've hinted that the form factor will be totally different from anything out now. No screens, maybe something palm-sized with cameras and mics that can sense its environment. One insider said the prototype is sort of pebble-shaped, which makes sense given Ive's minimalist style. What they're chasing here isn't efficiency or productivity, it's emotional balance. I've said he wants these devices to make us happy and fulfilled, more peaceful and less anxious, and less disconnected. That's the real mission, to design tech that doesn't stress us out or hijack our attention, but actually makes us feel better. He even said, we have a chance to absolutely change the situation that we find ourselves in. We don't accept this has to be the norm. It's a surprisingly human take from the guy who basically helped invent our current screen addiction. And Altman seems just as serious about the idea. Hardware is hard, he said flat out, but we have a chance to do something amazing. He knows it's going to take time. Right now, 2026 looks like the earliest we might see a launch. But insiders are already saying delays are likely. They're not alone in this race either. Meta's already sold around 2 million pairs of its AI smart glasses since 2023 and is working on three new models. There's a whole wave of AI-powered wearables popping up, from necklaces to fluffy robotic pets, but a lot of them have flopped hard. The Rabbit R1 handheld assistant and the Humane AI pin both the market with hype and ended up being, well, pretty disappointing. OpenAI clearly doesn't want to be the next entry in that list. Ives' language around all this almost sounds like he's trying to redeem technology itself. He talked about wanting these devices to feel inevitable, as if once you see them, you'll think, of course it had to be like this. He even said, if the interface can't make people smile, if it's just another deeply serious exclusive thing, then they failed. That's a big shift from the sleek, 
intimidating perfectionism of classic Apple design. And even though there's still zero public prototype, it's clear this thing, or things, are meant to be deeply personal. A kind of companion that blends into your daily life, aware of your surroundings and moods, helping quietly in the background. It's a far cry from the touchscreens and icons that have defined the last two decades. Ives betting on a screenless future powered by AI, one that's meant to make us feel a little more human, not less. So yeah, the guy who once put a screen in every pocket now wants to take them away. And with OpenAI's tech and a $6.5 billion bet behind him, he just might pull it off if they can actually solve those massive hardware and compute problems first. That's all for now. We'll see if this family of devices really ends up changing the way we live with technology or if it stays another Silicon Valley dream. Either way, it's one to watch. Thanks for sticking around. Catch you in the next one.